This video was made in collaboration with goodformulations.com. Thanks to them for letting me test their formulas and service. So if you found shampoo bars to be overly cleansing or even irritating, chances are you've fallen victim to poorly formulated shampoo bars. That's why we make things ourselves. The most important part of any shampoo bar recipe is the surfactants. So let's start there. Start by measuring out SCI, which is a very mild, sulfate-free, natural surfactant. I also use this in my foaming sugar scrub tutorial, so it's a pretty versatile ingredient that you'll always have use for if you like making cleansing products. Unlike with regular shampoo, we actually want to use a solid or powdered surfactant, and that way we can avoid using too much liquid in our recipe. If your SCI only comes in noodles or granules, and you're wondering if it will still work, check out the full tutorial on wholeelise.com, as I do give you more details about substitutions there. To our powdered base, add cowling clay for its natural cleansing and conditioning properties, along with cocomidopropyl betaine. It gives this shampoo bar a really lovely creamy foam, but it also keeps it mild. Next, you'll need to mix cationic guar gum with glycerin. Not only does this help with thickening our shampoo bar, but guar gum is an anti-static and conditioning agent that leaves your hair feeling soft and smooth after you've rinsed out the shampoo. Once we've got our cleansing and conditioning ingredients together, we'll need to add in extra moisturizing elements. I'm using panthenol, also known as vitamin B5, which hydrates and strengthens the hair along with jojoba oil, as this is really close to your skin's natural sebum, so it's gentle and non-irritating, especially on the scalp. Rosehip oil not only adds this beautiful colour, but it also prevents your hair from feeling stripped or dry. So shampoo bars and soaps are not the same. They use completely different ingredients and processes. Shampoo bars are more like solid body washes. They're made by combining surfactants, which are a type of cleansing agent. And that's what lets you control just how strong or how mild you want the shampoo bar to be. Soaps combine oils or animal fats with an alkaline base, something like hydrogen peroxide. They pretty much only come in one strength, clean. At this point, we'll need to roughly mix our ingredients together. Now you might be tempted to use a whisk, but because this is quite a dry recipe, I find the shampoo bar just gets stuck between the prongs and honestly it's a pain to get out. So I'd recommend using a fork like you see here, preferably one that you don't eat with, although technically this is just a lump of washing up liquid, so I'll leave it to your discretion. Once you've mixed it a little, go ahead and add in your preservative. Here I'm using Isocard PFA, but you could also use Optifen or your preferred broad spectrum preservative. Also take this opportunity to add in vitamin E oil and any fragrance you'd like. I know I'm not showing it here, but if you're a long time subscriber, you know full well that each ingredient has been measured to the gram. What I love about this method is that mixing by hand lets you get a feel for the consistency. And that way, you can tell if something's gone wrong with the shampoo bar before it's too late. But there is another method that gives you a more moisturising shampoo bar. In fact, what if I told you that there was a place where you could not only get a moisturising shampoo bar formula, but also several other premium cosmetic formulations? And that's why I've made this video in collaboration with goodformulations.com. Goodformulations.com is designed to help at-home formulators and small businesses create unique and personalised cosmetic products. You can find everything from premium formulas for body butters and scrubs, to specialty products like anti-aging creams, shampoos, and even intimate washes. Not only do they have a built-in batch calculator for each and every formula that they sell, but they also include free information on ingredients, such as INCIs, usage rates, and even formulation advice. The entire goal is to get you comfortable making the products that you want at home. To get 15% off their moisturizing shampoo bar formula, which I'll also make in this video, enter the code WHOLEELISE15 at the checkout.
This promotion is available for the first 100 purchases using this code. So check the description box below for more information. One of the main complaints that I get about online courses is that they tend to be behind when it comes to showing you how to make the products that people are buying and selling today. By focusing exclusively on formulas and product development, goodformulations.com could be the perfect resource to take your products to the next level. But I thought the best way to tell if a service like this is even right for you is to show you the difference between a classic shampoo bar recipe and goodformulation.com's recipe. Let's make this. Good Formulation's moisturizing shampoo bar formula has three parts, the cleansing agents, the moisturizers, and the feel enhancers. These are melted separately, combined together, and then poured into a mold to make a solid bar. When you compare this to the processes used to form our classic shampoo bar, which don't worry is coming up next, you can really start to appreciate the difference in a more advanced formulation. Even though this recipe is enriched with butters and oils, it still doesn't sacrifice the foaming capabilities of the shampoo bar. Going back to our classic shampoo bar recipe, there's a huge difference in how these shampoo bars are formed. The type of shampoo bar recipe determines which mold you need to use. As a general rule, recipes that use mainly powdered or solid surfactants and only have a small amount of liquid ingredients require press molds. Rather than the pouring method of goodformulations.com for at home products, I found the best success using a three part mold and you can use this without an expensive shampoo press. I'd recommend using the silicone version rather than the one that you see here because it is easier to remove the shampoo bars. When you can press the shampoo between your fingers and it stays together, you can move on to forming the bars. Each bar is around 50 grams. And again, I'm not eyeballing this, there is a scale just off camera. If your mold is like mine with no flexibility, lay a piece of king film on the base to prevent the bar from sticking. Add your measured out ball of shampoo and another layer of cling film on the top. Then the hollowed out cylindrical piece. Once everything is locked and loaded, carefully press the center piston as far down as you can. When you remove the base lid, you should see a perfectly formed shampoo bar. To get it out, drive the piston straight through. And thanks to the cling film that we used, the shampoo bar should just pop right out. Now this is the difference between you making a solid shampoo bar that will hold up through several washes versus a crumbly mess that ends up mostly on the bathroom floor. So let's go over these steps again. I designed this shampoo bar recipe to compete with what's being sold in stores and it definitely holds up. But if you're looking for something a little more advanced, 
check out goodformulations.com. Right now, they're offering a 25% discount on their monthly subscription service, exclusive to Whole Elise subscribers. Make sure to use the code Whole Elise at the checkout to get the discount.